Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out Come to Where I'm From. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast, and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated. Come, come to where I'm from podcast episode 124. Oh, that's, that sounds nice. Our and, guest, and Christine. Christine. Is Hello. Hello. This, they, these sound good. Yeah. It brings you in. Hello. Nice to see you. You, you too, Joseph. I love the colorful array of you. It's time, you know. It's time to be colorful. Yeah, it's um, it's it's a flavor of a day. What mood you're in? <laughs> yeah. And it's a uh, scratch like a like you were just a re- before we turned on the machine. You said you had yogurt vats in your home. Yeah. I have like clothing scrap vats. I have c- clothing piles. Yeah. Oh, things. you do piles. I have piles like a big mount, a closed mountain. Do you have cats? No, no Because they'll, they'll piss all <laughs> over piles. Yeah. All over. So you can't do the piles. And you, you can't do the piles. Well, what's your kitty cat's name? Tickles Pickles. Tickles Pickles. Tickles Pickles. Tickles Pickles. 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 Yeah. He's a man, he, but he's a little prince, a bit of a she now that uh, I've picked them up and put them in my home. They were an alley cat. Oh, okay. Like me. All right. So I kind of brought Tickles Pickles in. It's a rags to riches story. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it hasn't ended yet. <laughs> and where do you live? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm finding myself in Brooklyn now. But you were in Austin, right? Yes, or? yes, for a long time. Uh-huh. I, th- 13 years. Wow. You, you, you messed up. You, everyone's moving there. Fuck that. I'm getting up. <laughs> no, I did not. Elon Musk yeah. is there. I did not mess up. I got out before he put my dick on a spaceship and shot me out to Creative Lake or something. <laughs> I I had a good time. I wish that had happened. I, and New Orleans as well. Yeah, New, oh, Orleans, I love New Orleans too. I used to live there. Yeah, you're lucky you got out of there. It's a velvet coffin. Yeah. Yeah. It's and a lot of velvet. Yeah, a and lot a lot of, of coffin dark, too. A lot of dark maroon. <laughs> yeah, dark maroon is the color of New Orleans. Dark maroon. You is know they it? they say it's the the. So I love all of the the slim descriptions of it. They say it's the city that care forgot. The care forgot. Care, yeah. That's interesting. The city that care forgot. I like that one a lot. The care forgot. Yeah, have you been there lately? It's a, the food will make you think no one cares about you after yeah. it digests and goes through your shithole. Yeah. No care. Some jambalaya. Yeah, uh, that too. Yeah. The yeah, barn. I don't know. There's something about it that's like magical, though. Oh, it is. There's no no place like it. How long did you live there? Long, long time. I found myself there. Years. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of, I think, came from there. And the yeah, I'm pretty much from the dirt of that that state and that area. Oh yeah. And then I located and found myself in Austin, in Texas. Austin. Well, I know a lot of people go from Austin, New Orleans to Austin, Austin to New Orleans is mm. a thing. Yeah, because That's they're both thing. down there, and there's yeah. not much good down there. So you better fucking and figure out where your mother ships are. Yeah. Pe- and between. Those are two mothers. I mean, you're not. Well, you're gonna go to Orlando? No. Nowadays, you are. Not me, fucker. <laughs> I will not be going there unless I'm. Nowadays, go- Florida's become a thing. Uh, it's a thing for something in my book. Piece of <laughs> shit. It's an old limp dick hanging off the country is what it is for me. But uh, why is it limp? Why? How do you know? Have it's you limp? seen it? It's like hanging there. <laughs> Maybe it's pointing up, and you're looking at it upside down. Oh, like I'm flipped up. Well, uh, certain. Uh, psychedelics and such i'm sure that could be the case but right now it looks like a big old lamp okay. papa dick like all the papas in tech, uh florida sarasota you know that's, that's where they true. go to, that's where they go to die you got a good point there but then again they invented viagra who's they well, i don't know somebody men <laughs> Some you know it used to be a blood pressure medication oh i know because when you take it the fucking blood feels like your head i don't know yeah. have you ever taken viagra before uh asking for a friend <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, yeah, I, have, I, have, I have i, I have. mean the gays love it i mean if you've ever done anything speedy then it's kind of or if you just want to... It becomes a necessary thing. Yeah. Or, or yeah. if you want to, you know, fuck the mile-long race all the time. But if you take a whole one... You don't need it, though. No, if, if you, you take you a whole... If you practice semen retention, you don't need it. 
Oh, okay. I don't have time to do semen retention. It gives you more time. Why do I want to retain it? Get the because fuck. It feels get... good when it comes out of me. I know, but also you can like channel it back up into your sort of crown. You are chakra. a hippie. You are a fucking hippie. <laughs> Yogurt eating pile of clothes, hippie. That snake from your what? what is it, from your, your chakra. Root, your root chakra. Your root chakra. That snake will travel up into your third eye. Go boom. And then you'll jizz all over, and then jizz all over from your third eye. <laughs> I've done you, that. You think it's, it's just? Fun I did that in that Stockholm eye. once. Try jizzing from this eye, Christine. I, I'll try. You should try. I'll go home tonight and try. try. I'll write. A, I'll keep a little journal with a lock on it, and then I'll get your hippie mailing address, and I'll send you my journal, and you can read all about it. Joe at hippiequestions dot com. Yes, yes. <laughs> hippie questions. Hippie Chakras qu- are us. Chakras. <laughs> Florida is hard. You can't chakra me. You can't chakra. Oh, no. Don't ever make that t-shirt. That's my please. album. You can't chakra me. Oh, my God. Chakra, chakra me. Chakra con. Make me feel better. You know that song? No. It's by Kiss. Ace Freely. Shock me. Anyway. Chakra me. So, okay. So, you you came from New Orleans. Is that where you grew up? I guess. I don't remember much of growing up. I just kind of hit the road okay. out of the dirt. Austin's where most of my... Austin? uh, Texas, then. mm, Yeah, Austin was where I kind of sprouted and started kicking. I'm only really have been fucking around on the earth here with y'all for about 12 years. So I'm I'm entering my adolescent teenagers for all y'all out there who really want to get a budding flower. Oh, yeah, 12 years, that's You're all. You're not even le- of legal age <laughs> No, nope. these parts. No. Nope. I think mm. in France, maybe. But <laughs> yeah, but they're all locked down. That's no fun over there. <laughs> Just kidding, France. I know it's not. Please, no. Catherine Deneuve would agree with you. She'd say it's oh, yeah. fine for a young woman of 12 to fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> She's my kind of girl. What happened? Uh, I just that's had a, an out of body experience. That's the ghosts. <laughs> Suddenly we were on the stairwell talking. Yeah, I know. About we, a drug deal. Well, you start talking about Catherine <laughs> like, Deneuve. It was like all of a sudden we were on the stairwell talking about LSD. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and a talk frog about, hopped up and said, I'm a who. The French. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Austin. And then, and you've, and you've just been here now for 12 something years. Well, then, so what, why'd you move to Brooklyn then? What happened? Oh, because... And how long ago? Oh, I got back into New York um, two years ago. Fresh. Back. I'm back, fresh. Back to New York. Yeah, I had but spent time here too uh, back in the late, early 2000s. Okay. And I ventured around and decided to come back here because Austin pretty much did everything it could and I left there real happy uh I left there not I hate when people move from place a place and they're like fuck fuck this place I'm done with it fuck it and they run off Mm -hmm. and I was real thankful to Austin and I was real appreciative because everything I'm enjoying right now all the fruits on the trees and and the the dicks in the yard. Everything came from Austin and the people I worked with yeah. there to create what we're doing. We were just talking about. So it was hard to leave. Yeah, no budgets and lots of good friends and filmmakers and musicians. My producers and, and are And a still, thriving scene now. Like, yeah. Especially for performance art stuff. I mean, like the whole comedy explosion down there that Joe Rogan's bringing and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's a lot of, probably got a lot of interesting potential, or maybe it's a bad thing. I don't know. I don't know. Comedy. Seems like a good thing. Yeah. But like also just for performing arts and stuff. When there's a lot of rude shit that's come out of there, like the Dicks. You ever heard of the Dicks? That old uh, gay ass punk band. They came out of there the and dictator. Butthole Surf, or Gibby uh, Hang. They all came out of Austin. I it's used a, to see him. In my, I used to live in Red Hook, and he's there. Yeah, I see him too. He's yeah. that's a Austin. Shout out some rotten good crap I mean, yeah. i'm pleased to be a part of it yeah i like i like that attitude because i was thinking about this about hoarders and how like oh they i got some hoarder friends right now i mean i'm kind of a hoarder friend of myself okay. but like uh what you've been thinking about them yeah i've been thinking about hoarders and thinking like okay it's like so weird they can never let go of anything in life because everything in life they almost overvalue everything 
That's a very nice way to describe a hoarder. <laughs> yeah, but what else sets up that particular dysfunction that you think? I don't know. I, I get really frustrated. I think it's a psychological thing, well, so I can't fuck with that. You yeah. know, that's like ingrained. Yeah. That's like the demon when they have to drill a hole in the skull and I let it come out. What's up something. with that? What's up with the hole in the skull? That's that, how they used to do. But there's still people that believe in that. Like, it's like oh, a, of course, there's people a, that believe a lot of crap today. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the hole in the skull. Uh, in the skull. Hell in the skull. The hoarders, I just, I don't understand because when it gets real bad, you know, like the paper, yeah. papers and cat piss and stuff, I just don't know. But it's it's yeah. a psychological uh, it's a wonderland problem. for yeah. them. I, that must be so exciting for a hoarder. I think it's got to be painful. But I don't know. They seem very happy and it seems to be treasures everywhere that they want well, to keep. Well, there's levels of hoarders. I'm a hoarder yeah. too. No, I'm, I'm just a not out of hoarder. control. I'm not hoarder. out of control. It's hard yeah, to yeah. throw certain I'm Slightly out. Of, I'm almost out of control. I don't know. I think I, I keep things too, but I'm not a hoarder. I just think yeah. I put them in a little box for later. Like You're a, right. That's yeah. an arc of it. I'm an archiving. archiving. Yeah. Saving my journals. That's not hoarding. No, there are yeah. people that actually like keep their waste and stuff like that. You know. Oh, oh, like poop. Yeah, stuff garbage. like that. Yeah, yeah, like, like, yeah, like serious, garbage. serious piles. piles. Yeah, oh, piles. I know. Those are the ones I get really like. I'm not really like, that. Ooh. No. <laughs> That's when it goes into like the family of people eating their couches and things and stuff. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, if they're happy, if that, if that lady who ate her couch is happy and not dying from it, then honey, eat your couch. I'm yeah. cool. Right. Go for it. Just don't eat my couch. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so. Um, you, so you were in Austin. Is that where you became Christine? Or how that, that's just where I started. That's where you started. Yeah, yeah. I started doing music. And right. um, I, I wrote a song called Fix My Dick. Fix Your Dick. And that was my first song. And, and how does that go? Um, the song? Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's a treasure. It's, uh, how, how many, how many people does it take to fix my dick? Come on, sit your short shot down on that pole. Crack your back while working that hole. Yeah, chicken. Yeah, chicken. Like, that's a little taste of it. Uh, it's a very, uh, hello, here I am. Uh, Oops, my knife fell out. Uh, yo, whoa. That's not a knife. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's, what? That's a knife? Yeah. You are a hippie. <laughs> it's got a what is that a leather handle i actually got it in france oh but back in france it's in france yeah a, a savoir from france let me see let me see you can have it if you want Wait, back oh i'll get in trouble dick, with yeah. this yeah i know I, don't, I, I actually it's wooden i had a gig yesterday so i have my knife on me so i don't walk around with a knife usually i don't i, I like to walk it. around with a hammer but i also heard that you described yourself as a switchblade yeah i like i like to feel like a uh, switchblade yeah what do you mean by that well i don't have to take too long to pull it out and cut it's quick i don't like i got didn't want to have to spend too much time primping and worrying about things i don't that's not in my nature mm -hmm. i kind of show up and you you have to eat whatever however the meat is cooked Right. And um, the switchblade to me, I think a, a, a stiletto, the kind that comes straight up out of mm -hmm. it. That's, yeah. that's my favorite. Right. And the uh, danger and the speed and action of, a, of, a, of a, a, an object like that very much uh, turns me on. And also is the kind of relationship I'd like to have with the people who are kind and brave enough to enter a room to view the shit I'm spilling out for them. Right. It's dangerous. You can, I'll jump on you, I'll spit on you, and I might love you, and I won't cut you personally. Why is that dangerous? Well, because if you're standing out there and I jump on top of you, it might hurt your head and um, ruin you, your nice somebody head. Somebody might like it. I know everyone likes it. Well, then they it's keep, not that. <laughs> they keep, I'm just saying to the people in the hippie homes where your oh, audience. Oh, you think be. hippies won't? <laughs> <laughs> no, they just crumble when you jump on them. They're like, oh. oh. <laughs> not, not chakra hippies. Not chakra hippies. They're chakra tight. hippies are strong. They're like a tree. They're like a tree. You can jump on chakra hippies. No, but I, and, um, <laughs> there's danger in any place you go. Yeah. So I like to, I like to be immediate, in, immediate, but also aware of and dancing with the danger of it. I like that. Right. I think it's quite enjoyable. It is enjoyable. Yes. I think it's emotionally healthy too. 
Uh, yes, I agree with you. Yeah, because if you give yourself a vehicle to display certain sides of yourself without reservation, that's a gift most people never give themselves. Yeah, it's quite vulnerable. I believe in vulnerability a yeah, lot. I don't yeah. think most fucks who are on stage who aren't vulnerable are going to really offer me much that I can appreciate. What do you mean by that? I mean, if I can't, if you're just up on stage and there's not a, a quality of vulnerability to you, right. it's so perfect and polished, mm -hmm. I'm pretty bored. Right. I want to, or if it is perfect and polished and you supremely find your, the person on stage supremely finds himself in a situation where something has gone terribly wrong mm -hmm. and like a light fixture falls mm -hmm. or a, the the drummer has a, a seizure and pisses himself <clears throat> and falls through the drum kit that uh, person who's in command how they deal with that situation mm -hmm. in that vulnerable stage is also either going to win my praise or send me walking out the door. Mm. If you can command a room with a script and perfect lighting and a wonderful director and a fantastic editor, but you can't handle a fucking ex 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 insane yeah, situation on stage, and you have to say, oh, everybody, hold on, we'll be right back, we'll be right back, mm. I'm gonna fucking leave, because mm -hmm. you don't know what the fuck you're doing. I 100% agree with that. <laughs> that yeah. I, I love leaning into awkwardness and performance. It's n I mean, it's it's fun. I mean, is, I'm it's sure where all the fun is. some people just don't have that ability, and that's okay. And if you're really good, or you're just fucking strange, I'll stick around and watch you drown. Mm -hmm. Everyone likes to see a boat sink at the same time. <laughs> mm -hmm. But even if, if the sinking goes boring, too, then I'm gone. Right. If you're screaming while it sinks, I will stick around. And I'll help you get off the boat, too, sometimes. I've done that, too. Yeah. So what's the vulnerability like when you perform? Like, what's your, what's your, uh, what kind of vulnerability do you sort of lean into? Well, I'm, 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 I'm raw as fuck, and I talk about things that are uh, going through my head that 99% of the stank time is going through y'all's head. I don't right. approve of myself or see myself and I don't like when other people get onto a stage and play the messiah and say, I have all the answers and I'm presenting them to you and I am the rock god or whatever the fuck they call themselves. I don't like that shit. I'm not here to give you answers. I'm here to fucking shit on you. Basically, I'm just going to eat all the shit that you've been feeding me, and then I'm going to shit it back out at you, and we're going to talk about what's sitting in that buffet. And it's a shared experience. It's a shared quality between all of us beings about good shit and really bad shit, but it's real shit to me, and I'm not scripting this crap, and I don't script the fucking thing, so I just jump into some shit with you but what do you mean by shit oh i told everybody like somebody's I shit could be somebody else's messiah complex and somebody's messiah complex well, could if, be somebody else's shit yeah for sure yeah. no one's got the same so toilet. i want to know what your toilet is filled with well so to speak. yeah sure <laughs> put your rubbers on i mean i I, I don't like to i don't always give out like painful crap like i, right. like, I like people i like people to think a certain way so if you're going to go like, like what my toilet flush is backwards you know so it's like <laughs> i like to tell people one of my favorite two things that i've always spoken about one was that everybody in the world but in particularly like you two shits right here y'all mm -hmm. each of you has a pony inside of you i used to talk about this all the time my little pony you can give you that's the kind you've got if that's sometimes what, if, exactly exactly <laughs> absolutely sometimes there see you're it's very my, vulnerable it's right a my now little pony yeah and then other times it's a stallion Exactly. And other times it's the Italian That's when he style. takes Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, actually, you got that backwards. When I take Viagra. Just like 
Florida. When I take Viagra, it's My Little Pony. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. That, see, he's very vulnerable. See what I brought out in you? See, it's working. <laughs> it's like a little charmer. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is exactly what I'm talking about. See, yeah. you have a very decorative uh, vocal pony. Yeah. And you obviously know it very well. I love him. And when I go out on the streets and the, the countries, many people's ponies have been uh, shaved, right. shackled, and put in a barn with no I windows. See what you're saying, yeah. And it's like people fucking start to understand mm. that you're an individual uh, pony. Decorate that pony, brush that pony, color its hair, get it out of yeah, the barn, and find the uh, find the other ponies out on the streets running and start running in the herds of them and get out of there. That's just <laughs> see, a, that's beautiful. That's a very basic. But see, you thing. described all it before. It's like shit, this shit, that. Well, to shit. me, that is that's the not, opposite of shit. That is like flowers from heaven. Uh-uh, but the shit is that the world we fucking live in right now yeah. is shaving, shackling, and putting your fucking pony in a fucking barn and locking it up and making them all look alike. You think that so? is, Yes. But isn't there, isn't there a move away from that in society too? Like Yeah, finding your pony and getting the fuck out of there and yeah. finding other people who you can relate to. But that's very difficult for yeah. many people. For many people, that's yeah. a That's a very difficult thing less for people. Less and less, I feel like, though. I hope so, but I, I think still so. think that there's people who are struggle. very afraid to and struggle with uh, just being themselves. Right. Well, also, whoever yourself is, is for me personally, is a fluctuating spectrum that is constantly shifting and moving, and I'm constantly evolving and becoming different aspects. And it's one of the things I wanted to ask you about in that, like, in, I mean, I don't know how much you want to talk about, that, like, aspects of playing different characters or whatever but like you giving yourself that that vehicle to me is like such a is a strong thing an amazing emotionally healthy thing to do and so many people can't do that and they're stuck in one fixated spectrum of themselves mm. and so you think a lot of your work maybe like what you just said I take it is to mean like you're showing people that they can be more expansive I'm showing people and I'm showing myself. Right. Uh, it's a, I'm, I find myself to be a very fluid spiritual being yeah. that has happened upon this realm. Yeah, you are. And I have decided to take on this vessel. It's awesome. Whenever I need to come out and speak to you. <laughs> and I'm thankful enough to have this vessel to kind of allow myself it's like wonder woman's little invisible jetta to fly it's around and do my blade shit jetta. Sweet blade jetta so <laughs> switch blade jetta I, I, not a jetta i don't not a jetta, jetta. i'm not driving a you're that's not like a jetta. driving a, you're a jedi that's like a geo storm <laughs> yeah maybe a switch blade tesla but you don't mm. like him either so. i'm not going there I'm just I like like, give me a horse and <laughs> give me a horse and wagon give me a good old horse and chuck wagon i want to read you a comment like uh, oh god from no, where this is good like this a, is all very good this is like a restaurant's comment board or something this is like christine gives amazing social commentary on mental illness homelessness depression and a lot of other things most people in public would find negative if you think she is ooh or gross you simply just don't understand love christine that's nice what do you think of that christine gives Amazing social commentary on mental illness, homelessness, depression. I, I found that was kind of interesting. Well, it's uh, most most that? fucks I know deal with those things, and if they say they don't, they're lying out of their fucking holes. Right. And uh, I think that um, the reason people, I hope, go and find themselves in dark rooms to see a soul on a stage become vulnerable and howl out sounds from within themselves. I hope that those people who pay to go see that um, usually are going because they're trying to find an avenue to allow themselves to step away from the barn and the shackle and the shaved pony and to maybe glean some light or sound or a physical feeling in a heart room that can inspire them to start to perhaps understand 
what that thing is in them that might be a little off or what that fucking dog is on their shoulder that tells them to shove that powder up the nose or the needle in their arm or their dick in a hole or their fucking fist in a hole maybe too much more than they can handle maybe it's a binge worthy situation or it's something that they're struggling with i hope that the people who come to these gatherings in these spaces are able to plug into me and feel or glean or find a certain kind of voice or understanding that can help them to better understand themselves. I am not the most attractive thing in terms of the magazines and what what human beings might deem as attractive. I feel like Elizabeth Taylor inside of Sybil Shepherd's pussy. I think you're but attractive. I do too. I feel I, I'm a very sexual I being. I find you attractive. Thank you. Yeah. I'm a very sexual, <laughs> wild being. Sybil Shepherd's pussy. I mean, no, Elizabeth, I'll always, in Elizabeth, Sybil Shepherd in Elizabeth No, Taylor's Elizabeth Taylor in, a, in Sybil's in pussy. pussy yeah. I just like to think of those things. Sybil always know. pops up in my head. I don't know why. But um, Because of Bruce Willis. Maybe so. Oh, because I'd sit on his face for days. <laughs> <laughs> he still looks good. And I also, well, we'll get back to moonlighting, because don't let that slip. But um, <laughs> I think that I try to keep myself at its lowest place so that everyone in the room can be above me, can feel... Uh, something uh, higher than or more inspired than this piece of dirt. But it never works that way. It's just always a shared inspired feeling and all. But I like to um, I like to scream and kick and throw dirt and pull things out of my ass and be as wild as the wild soul as I can be, as I am. Uh, because that's the only way. It's like in the Hollywood movies when they shake them, shake them, slap them in the face and or hit them with a dead fish in the face or like the vine would do or something. Like You got to shock it out of people yeah. sometimes. And, and I like to take you on a theatrical... I'm a theater faggot. I like to go... You're going to get a show. We're going to go very hard. We're yeah. going to go soft. We're going to go dark. We're going to go happy. We're going to go churchy. I don't give a fuck, mm -hmm. but you're going to go places, Somewhere. and I, it's worth the shitty, cheap-ass ticket you bought. Yeah. Yeah, you don't strike me as dirt, though. Well, you should look inside my purse sometime. <laughs> I found it in my purse. I, I, I haven't, uh, I haven't. Well, now I see the drawings on your well, purse. Well, I get, no. Like, those, okay, that's a little. These are from people. I get everyone to sign my purse. I want to sign it. Okay, you will. Um, <laughs> but I found an old COVID mask. It must have been, this thing probably has COVID in it. I'll probably, this is the next viral strain. Oh, no. Look at that. That's disgusting. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it's I found it at the purse. Go I ahead. think this is from a march. This you can is... go ahead and throw that away. Oh, no, no. Actually, put it in a frame. I'm going to fucking vacuum seal this and sell it. Yeah. Better idea. And then when we all hear our, we are dead and COVID's been <laughs> stopped years later, some shit little kid's going to open Break up the that. vacuum seal and you watch it be like the dinosaurs dying again. <laughs> you know what's so interesting is I was playing last night at City Winery and I was having, and I rehearsed a lot. Um, sometimes I have a, mode of performing this very broke down and kind of like vulnerable to a fault maybe or unrehearsed or like and then but this one I was like sort of rehearsed a lot and I felt like a few times in the show that I was like okay you're being a little too strong and strident it was almost like just re something you said reminded me of it like there is something good about being it, that mix of vulnerability and strength because you don't want to go all vulnerable, like putty, like melting all over the stage. No, nah, then you're like... Um, like pathetic. Well, then you're... But you just don't have the chops to keep the people there. Right. Like, some people like to see a ship sink, like I said. Yeah. But if you're... I always got confused when certain musicians would get on stage and they would cry and hide behind a speaker. Mm. And I'm like, well, I, I'm, I feel for you. Like, I, I do. Like, I mean, yeah. you're obviously going through something. But yeah. um, 
I need you to do a little more. <laughs> like, this is a room full of people. So right. if you're going to hide behind the speaker, then sing behind the speaker. Like, I don't give a fuck. Who's that man who sang all his back to the audience for his later years? Like, yeah, I, I don't mind that shit if you're creative with it or if you need to sing behind the speaker, do mm -hmm. it. I think that's exciting. But if you just sit there and cry and then they have to cancel the show, then I have a big problem. Right. Are you talking about cat power? No. I'm just no. <laughs> I, there's a, there, well, there's a list of she people. She used to do that a lot. Like, well, there's and she made it work for her. Uh, I mean, I'm a fan, so I'm not dissing. Some of performance I mean, art yeah, behind a sheet. Yeah, yeah. Where, well, know, yeah, there's like that whole Nine shit. Inch Nails, Trent did it. But Robert Fripp used to not be on stage, and oh, okay. his presence yeah. was like more big because he wasn't on stage. I mean, who knows? That, that shit could be planned, and that shit could yeah. be an act. You don't fucking know. It's called theater. You're in a room with a stage. It's called theater. Yeah. But I don't. Like I said, like I feel for those people, but sometimes I'm like, maybe you shouldn't be on this stage right now. Or maybe, what the fuck? Where's someone who's in your fucking circle to tell you you shouldn't be on that stage right now? Right. I, like, that's when people get really fucking weird is when these people get so um, popular. Yeah. And they're in these circles of people who just say yes to everything, which is why we don't no longer have many of our iconic singers because they're all dead because no one fucking told them hey don't take the painkillers and get in the elevator right. hey don't go touch kids talking and get in the, talking about all of them yeah isn't that wild though that he did get into an elevator and then let's go crazy he said never gonna let the elevator take us down let's go crazy. i think it's, did you ever think about that no i didn't you're the first person who's brought that up to my brain is that true uh yeah because he's like in let's go crazy it's like it talks about death and he goes don't not gonna ever let the elevator take us down let's go crazy like and it's like he died in an elevator it's just so wild i think it's the first and he died by the way five years ago today i know happy happy, happy death day and happy there's so many happy time to prince yeah, yeah pour some out for prince i'll do a little bit there we go <laughs> um there's I think something very elegant about dying in your own elevator in your home as well. <laughs> I really do. No. I'm not lying. Well, because like you have an elevator. Well, one, I'm sure his elevator looked amazing. Right. I'm sure he had a... I bet yeah. it was the coolest fucking elevator in the world. And yeah. two, I don't know, like painkillers in an elegant elevator in the privacy of your home. If I had to go... Right. It's not so bad. It's not the worst. It's very, you just, the, the door was open and they'll just find you sleeping there on the floor. Like, okay. I mean, in Prince. Like a little Prince. And like a little, <laughs> like a little Prince. In his, in his trajectory of life, I'm glad it was at least calm and elegant in an elevator instead of like, you know, some tragic crap. Well, that is pretty tragic though, drugs. Well, drugs, drugs can suck, be very tragic. Because it's like I thought about like, because it's also... When you're on a drug run, you're not you're not you're not connected to your higher self at all. You're like you're you're dealing with the lower vibrational aspect of your being. And so you're dying from that point of view and that's that's terrible for somebody like Prince, I think. Or I, anybody really. I guess, but I would disagree that when you're on drugs you're always at your lowest. Well no, that's true. I because agree. I think that you, some drugs can explore. will actually enhance <clears throat> and better uh, uh, your perceptions of life and creativity in in uh you don't have to kill yourself on not drugs in abundance. to enjoy them i agree i've had great uh, experience in moderation. i've had great experiences <laughs> yeah i i've, I've had fantastic drug experiences and, and still do introduce me to sides of myself and stuff and i'm grateful for those experiences but at the same time like i'm super enjoying this like 100 percent sobriety thing Except yeah. for CBD, because I was so long without it. I was on Kava and Kratom, and I was like... That yeah. sounds expensive. It, it, it was. Yo, it's so expensive. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. I'd rather have, do have drugs. You ever, exactly, because it's like, it's barely a drug, and it takes all your money. Yeah, yeah fuck that. That sounds so you, like, you, that's like Gwyneth Paltrow. Just like, yeah. here, put this vacuum in your pussy and pay $2,000. It might explode, but 100%. who cares? It was like, my $2,000 Gwyneth Paltrow have a, Yeah, I'd rather have a sex addiction and put 100 dicks in my pussy than a vacuum with a candle in it. <laughs> That costs more than all the dicks in the world. That's about 
That's the best assessment of my Kava addiction I've ever heard. But I think I also think... That's basically what it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. A hundred percent was that. It is. Like, it the is. vagina vacuum. I mean, yeah, no, yeah. it was a compensating for probably wanting a sex addiction and not letting myself just have that for half the price, mm, at least. Yeah, but I also think... <laughs> I think it's important. I, I, think, I think of this a lot. Like, when you have, like addictions or you 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 know the way you just said like yeah. i feel that drugs can bring you down and this and that i think it's like it's a personal thing for you yeah. and i i think about that more i try to think about mm, more these days in relation to uh people who listen to the work i make or view the work i make and how how to be uh, aware of different experiences mm -hmm. because there's there's some people who uh, drugs are helping them, you yeah. know. They're actually getting them out of the dark places. And there's some people who yeah. are creating things on drugs. And I feel the Absolutely. way I've been having troubles uh, with the people's addictions of my own included of like uh, technology and things and yeah. the platforms and i and many people i know depend upon a social platform to uh, share our Make work because i don't have a manager i don't have an agent i don't have a label i don't have fuck shit and you're on the best podcast in new york city oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so in a basement <laughs> <laughs> with strange <laughs> art. That's fucked up. Hippie shit. Right um, but I have a big problem. Like, for instance, like, I want to uh, leave the realm of fuckbook, you know, Facebook. Like, I don't right. need it anymore. But my first instinct was to burn it to hellfire and to say, this shit, which it is, is the devil, right? Uh, yeah. This shit is the devil. This fucking shit is controlling and it's a yucka da yucka yuck yuck yucka da yuck and then I had to stop because I know many people especially old folks yeah people who are living alone <clears throat> right people who are missing their children yeah and I'm torn because I, I say these people this thing it's a big deal really for makes their life so much better. Yeah, I get goosey bumps talking. You're, you're making me get the feels right well, because, now talking about this. Well, it's like, true because I, I want to say it's terrible. And for me, it's terrible. For me, it's the fucking, I want to, it goes against everything. Yeah. And I'm trapped in a world where I have to find ways all of the creative people I know, yeah. we're always trying to find ways to communicate yeah. our work to people in a very ever-changing landscape. Yeah. So I just had to put my brakes on before I opened my big shit mouth. Mm. And I thought about many people I know who who are happy because they can talk to people and especially in the plague times so yeah. i think it's the same way with the drugs and all like it doesn't work for me for these reasons yeah. but it might work for this person yeah and it's and it's i think the world that with this fucking crap ass cadillac we're driving around in is gonna probably try to get a little bit better if we start to think that way Okay, I got two things. For one, if you made a video saying everything you just said about Facebook and posted it on Facebook, I bet you you would get. I bet it would go. We fuck. just did make a video, you <laughs> fuck. Exactly. This is the video. That, You're right. That was the promo. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Hippie, <laughs> hippie. <laughs> the acid just kicked. Yeah, me. hello. No, so, so yeah, like. But that statement is great. You should post that it's on powerful. Facebook. It's but powerful. But that's how, what we all feel. But that's how yeah, you I, talked to me I, before I, at the beginning. That's how I talk in my shows. Yeah, okay. I will start screaming. I don't know if... Yeah. Do you do a lot of talking in yeah. your shows? Uh-huh, yeah. God help them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <People like it>. <laughs> <laughs> I know they do. I'm just fucking with you. I know you are. But um, <laughs> I, 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 I love to talk i get very um when i go see a 
performer I like, and they don't talk. Uh, they yeah. just they just say thank you. It gets aggressive after a while. Well, like just, if they never talk, like, like Dylan, it gets aggressive. I used to do that. I used to go like, I'm just gonna, play, I'm pure or something, and it was like it's so, so bad. It's terrible. But again, if it maybe they it can't talk. It, it worked for a while. Well, maybe maybe they just can't. It freaks Stage them out, time. and they'll, yeah. they'll fucking piss their pants well, if they true. talk. Yeah. So again, it's called. Um, Compassion, yeah, it's <laughs> or called compromise, empathy, empathy. empathy. Yeah, all these yeah, things. Yeah. You can still fucking shit kick and spit and jump and all piss in crowds and pull things out of your ass and still have empathy and Man, compassion. You're like, that empathy is really borderline hippie shit, though, too. You're, if you're not careful. Hello, Austin, Texas. You think yeah. I didn't walk away with hippie germs on you, me? You got hit. You are a hippie. You're, <laughs> I think you hip- might be more of a hippie than me. Well, my armpits smell like a hippie yeah, right yeah, now. I can tell. <laughs> My, un- my underwear looks like a hippie, I bet, because I'm not wearing any. I'm wearing short. I'm wearing yoga shorts. You fucking hippie. I swear to God I am. I, no, I believe it. Trust me. He's going to show me. Well, y'all can see, too, because there's a video on. <laughs> I bet they're just spiker shorts, like spandex shorts that we used to have with the padded butts. I, I, Joe's taking his pants <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's a... Oh, wow. You have, like, layers. Well, then, these are the yoga shorts. And he's wearing a suit on top of it. Wow, um, you're a New York hippie. You're an everyman. An ever-changing hippie. <laughs> an everyman. I, I didn't ever know if we man. were going to do yoga afterwards. <laughs> oh, I just wanted no. to be prepared. I'm prepared always. <laughs> I, if I took, I'm actually, I wore pants because I had to. I got, like your pants. Well, these I usually don't wear them. I usually I just know. I usually just wear this. Oh, that's cool. And then, um, uh, you're under and then it goes like yeah, that. Yeah. But it's cold out. Yeah. That's my nice belt my friend Kamal gave me. I need another belt. Um, this belt sucks. Yeah, but and these pants are from my friend Rick Owens, and he's so kind and makes oh me. Oh my God, are you kidding? Are you really friends with Rick Owens? He gave me these pants and shoes. That's amazing. Because he a, makes I, me, he makes me feel beautiful. Yo, Rick Owens, that's like top. Those pants, she got on it, cost like at least five thousand four hundred dollars not anymore <laughs> but i bet you they <laughs> not with that underwear <laughs> not she's that. over here going i'm dirty it's like she's wearing eight thousand dollar pants uh, and ten thousand nice. dollar shoes i swear to god yeah but because I, I have a rick owens jacket that i didn't is, buy them though that's awesome these are gifts from someone who thinks i'm beautiful well that's killer and i think he's beautiful so it's kind of mutual and I his him, wife is cool as hell too. michelle yeah is he a she, new york designer you mm. know who introduced me to him is lou reed where is he from lou reed loved him from california but he lives in paris now oh. but it's a new york vibe it's very new it, if i would say his his aesthetic is a new york thing mm. I think, well, mm-hmm. but I'm not a fashion person. I'm not either. <laughs> do I look like a fashion yeah. person? You actually do. I got to say. I, I, my suit is Dolce & Gabbana. Because there are people who only listen and don't watch. What year? No, I don't know. I don't know. I got it at Century 21 right before exactly. it closed. Exactly. Still was expensive, by the way. For anyone, Even though it's like TJ Maxx for high fashion. I like TJ Maxx. For anyone who just is <laughs> listening to the podcast and not watching it, I highly recommend I highly you recommend you watch. up. Christine and her videos. Yeah. And I mean, I fa- did, you are top of the line fashion in, in my yeah, opinion. You do well, because it's my pony. It's my, right. ho- it's exactly. my homemade that pony shit. Is exactly. out and exactly. I mean, this shirt, my friend Carrie gave me and it's an original Thompson That's twin killer. because she didn't wear it anymore. And I, she used to go to all the shows and she was in a punk band called Sexy Finger Champs. And she's every now and then Shout gives me some Carrie. of, yeah, it gives Those me some of her. Too. These are just from um, a costume store. It's just store. the color of them. What, what's the necklace, though? Oh, this is from, uh, you what? know what that is? This is a good luck hunchback from Naples, Italy. Nice. And he's, I thought it was a ghost. It's a pepper. Pepper ghost. It's a pepper, and he's a hunchback, and he has a horseshoe in his hand, and he's very famous in Naples for years and years and years, back in the mythological days. Wow. And, um, I've never seen that He'll before. ward off the evil eye, and he gives something like men's stamina, but I don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> uh, I had one a necklace, and I lost it. And so I found this big one, and it was too big for a necklace. So that's funny, because that's what I look like. I mean, an earring, an earring, not a necklace. When this I practice necklace. semen retention, exactly like that, like a big red thing hanging down. And I bet your face looks like that, too. And I have a top hat that's just like a spiritual top and hat. And all your semen collects in your back, and it makes a hump. <laughs> exactly. This is you. <laughs> this is you and when you're sleeping. So wait, tell me about touring with peaches. What you want to know? That's pretty awesome. It's amazing. You know what I love about Peaches is that big hit she had. Um, 
I'm gonna fuck or uh, what's it? Fuck the pain away. Yes. Is I love that it's like a sound check recording. Did you know that? Mm -mm. So the recording that's that big huge hit, fuck the pain away. Mm -hmm. That's just her doing it at sound check. That that's a isn't that awesome. Princess Purple Rain is a live recording. You're right. That's right. That he went back and and beefed added up. Added some stuff yeah. to right. Yeah, right, right. I don't even think she beefed it up. I I don't know. I heard that or something. Yeah, that's called brilliant musicians. Yeah. So uh, she was great. She yeah. we have mm, some mutual friends, mm -hmm. and uh, I was I told her this before I was uh by the finished touring in uh, Europe and stuff um, uh, for a nice length of time probably like maybe like two months which was like long for me mm -hmm. and you sometimes go through these stages where you have a nice run of uh, something and then you kind of say what the fuck is next or, mm -hmm. why am i doing this or, what the fuck is going on and who are these people paying for this i spent crap? years and, like that yeah mm -hmm. you know everybody again we all have these feelings in different ways you know yeah, yeah. and then we all do different things to deal with them don't we uh -huh. so uh i was sitting at a table at my friend lyle's place in london and my dancer just he looks very much like you t grab with long brown hair oh, and yeah. scrawny hippie and we were sitting like this at the table and literally saying i was like having an oprah moment with him saying i don't know what the fuck's going on like what are we doing what are we what's going on yeah. and then i get a text on my phone and it goes lights up and it's peaches and she says hey girl it's peaches would you like to go on tour with me and i wow. just said uh thomas i said I know what we're doing next yeah. and 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 i and i said uh, i think about it let me talk to my chicken i said let <laughs> me talk, talk to, to my, my chick i go let me talk to my chickens and i'll get right back to you and i did and i waited uh, about five minutes and then i texted <laughs> yeah, back and yeah. i said okay it's gonna be okay that's all awesome. and she um she is incredible and she brought me in to her family and we had many of the same family a lot of dykes out there and wild folks that uh I believe we all kind of, I like to look at this as a planet orbiting, you know, these systems. And you, um, you know a lot of planets out there, but sometimes the gravitational orbits make the planets come really close together. And um, then you have a really exciting supernova or something crashes or sours, or you just keep going, you know. You're blah. But that particular lineup of that constellation with her had also several little moons around it, and it was a very nice conjunction. So mm -hmm. uh, we were able to really enjoy ourselves and enjoy the familial qualities of our work. Yeah. And also, I learned a lot from her. She's a very seasoned bird yeah. in the craft. What did you learn? Well, I learned I, my favorite thing. Uh, the first thing, the first show we did, uh, she walked, we were doing sound check. And sound checks can be rough, you know. Uh, most times the technician is tired. Or they've done this a million times, oh, and they don't guy. they don't give a <laughs> fuck. Especially if you're shit. the opening band. Oh, it's, or if you're a woman walking into the room. Huh. Uh, and... Uh, it was very nice to watch Peaches walk into a room with a lazy sound person and uh, just swing her shit around and get the job done very quickly when they weren't there to deliver what she needed. And I don't mean in a mean way. Right. I mean in like a respectful way. Like, hello, is this your first time you've done this? You know? <laughs> and it wasn't, uh, I don't work with people who are mean. I don't work with people with tempers who blow up on people. I don't, I refuse to do it. There's other people out there who are very willing to take that job that you're fucking up with your fucking attitude. Mm -hmm. So, um, I agree. There's no reason to ever, ever work with people who have a nasty attitude and treat people badly or treat mm -hmm. you badly. There's always someone right behind them who will crawl on their knees to do their job happily mm -hmm. and they don't even have to crawl in my fucking family so uh she wasn't doing the mean stuff she was saying i'm here to work and you're disrespecting the space right now and I, that was just the first and i was like oh damn <laughs> when i saw that <laughs> you know and and then i was like oh she's fantastic she's, she's strong she's strong she means business but she's also very fun and stupid and delicate and crazy like me. Mm -hmm. And um, 
She has a good family. She takes care of her dancers. She takes care of the people who help her manage her whole planetary constellation. She really takes care of shit. And she lets you know when she needs time to be quiet. And she lets you know when it's time to have fun. And uh, there's a lot of respect on the bus. Yeah. And that was the first time I ever rode in a tour bus. And I had my little coffin spot up there. Right, the coffin. Yeah. What did you think of that? I loved it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I love like being in those little holes and you, you didn't get claustrophobic no it like rocked me i felt there's a strange movie called a mysterious planet uh-huh. oh, no mysterious island it's from the 70s it's the same animator who did those sinbad movies with the little caricatures like clash of the titans mm-hmm. stop start animation and there were these two people this man and a woman i always wanted to be the woman in this movie and they went into a cave and there was a giant giant creatures all over the island and there was a honeycomb and these big, big bees came and flew into the cave and, and he grabbed the half-naked lady and he said, come on, let's go hide in the honeycomb. And they went and got inside the honeycomb and like hid and then the big bee came and sealed them inside of it. So I think I've had a sexual fetish or something about honeycombs and getting sealed inside my whole life. Mm-hmm. So the tour, tour bus, bus is that. It's kind of like that. I was like, oh, I'm inside a little honeycomb. But I didn't have a naked person with me, so. Never? But that would, uh, Never on the whole tour? No, I, I'm, a, I'm a very... Um, I'm very good at cock blocking myself. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> what What are your techniques? Just being myself. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happens? Uh, most people, most people what don't take this techniques? raccoon home. Okay. No? <laughs> no, but also I'm usually not in a state of mind to engage. I know. I'm very explosive Focus. afterwards. Yeah. And, and I'm I'm dirty, and I don't mind the dirty, but yeah. I mentally. I'm still searching for what I want. Right. And I don't find that I care to use much of my energy fucking around. Right. For things I don't know if I want or not. <clears throat> I feel you on that. I would much rather. And it's a painful journey. And mm-hmm. it's a lonely journey. It can be lonely. And that's where Jack Daniels can be the best husband there is. It makes you lonelier. Uh, Jack and I had like a very Jack joy. Jack makes you lonely. No, right? no. Jack me. made me fucking happy. You but, know what makes me less lonely? A big tub of yogurt with some honey. Oh, hippie. <laughs> but yeah, Jack, Jack and I were like, Jack and I were like George and Tammy. You know, uh, George Jones and Tammy Wynette after a while. I was like, I got to get out of this relationship. That's another fucking around with some shit that drains your energy. That's the thing I don't like about the jack thing i get the whole like don't go for sex because that's like a whole other thing well i did not want to go for it i just no i understand i would never choose no sex i understand that well you would choose it because you probably do choose it It kind of chose for me but i know what you mean yeah Yeah. you go with it and you sort of chooses you you sort of choose it as well compromise i I get it it's a compromise i I have that same choice structure around sex a lot (laughs) too i understand it's a compromise (laughs) it's a relationship but like to me, it's like I, then if I, I wouldn't pick the Jack Daniels one because that's another relationship with something that's gonna drain me. Well, again, you. Yeah. Didn't drain me. No. No, I liked it. You like it? Yeah, I mean, I did. I don't. I Jack and I divorced. But yeah, so it did drain you. Well, it. Uh, Happy eventually, divorce. Eventually. What, what I discovered was yeah. that in the haze of a Jack marriage or in the haze of any kind of weed uh, no i'll stick with weed but uh in the haze of an of a a substance that can that can make you black out or really uh remove you or just give you a dopamine hit easily without having to work for it yeah i i found that the fortunate experience I, I was personally in of touring, of traveling to places in the world, of meeting very, very interesting, wonderful people, mm-hmm. I found in my quest for intimacy, mm. in my search for what I wanted, which I don't know what I want. I like, I tell people in my shows all the time, I say a hole's a hole. 
the world we live in right now, if you are somewhere and you feel a chemistry with somebody, anybody, male, female, trans, in between, animal of the ilk of a human, I don't care, the kids are doing it all today. If you have a chemistry with something, you take it home, you drop the clothes off of it, it might not be what you expected, but you had a chemistry with it, a hole's a hole. Mm -hmm. You stick with it. It's just, and if it's it's not about this idea of what you are supposed to love or fuck or want. It's a, it's a feeling. So holes are holes are holes, and I tell the crowd that all the time. A hole's a hole. You fucking jump on that if you feel it. You love on that, and it's special and it's important. Then you gotta get your pony out and ride it. So the alcohol and the things that can really cloud you up and slop you up, they keep you from those intimate experiences with not only people but places cities or yourself stages and yourself i'm okay but i want i i'm, I'm in another country i'm in i'm meeting these very amazing people and i'm not a hundred percent there right and i think that that's a shame it's fun for a while but after at the end of it all especially when you're a solo traveler yeah uh, those you can find intimacy outside of people yeah. and and the cloudiness of of taking substances from I think for many people can sometimes keep you from discovering true intimacy yeah what about like prayer and meditation or God or stuff like that? Do you have like a prayer life or anything like that, or do you have any kind of belief system in that realm i mean i uh, I know that I'm not uh, the the force that has created, created these things, but I have a very, uh, very easy, fluid understanding uh, or conversation with whatever the fuck it is out there. And I think the only thing I focus on most is being thankful yeah like when I, you get a text from pink or, i mean not pink sorry what, peaches? <laughs> peaches pink will never text me maybe, maybe but sure. i don't want to go hanging from ceilings and shit yeah uh, no but when you get a text from like peaches and you're at like this moment of going like what am i doing Do, like if like for me if i got that i would instantly be like thank you god like do you have that same instinct um i like to talk to inanimate objects anything if i for instance just performed in the basement of the cock okay for my easter special right. yeah that basement is over on second avenue mm -hmm. right? second. it used to be lit bar yeah lit and then it's the cock and it has a cock -a doodle doo yeah and the basement Red is a on. filthy back room just yeah. fucking and drinking and having a ball it better be it's of called course. the cock yeah <laughs> it's in and, new york city yeah and it's so, not a filthy but room. no, it's yeah, it's got to be. And that's and why I wanted to do a fucking Easter show down there in the name of those people's God. Uh, but <laughs> I was down there and I'm a big believer <laughs> when I go into a theater or even this space, uh, kind of. But when I go into places, mm -hmm. I like the I like the history of that place. This place has a huge history. Yeah, we were talking about yeah. it. And, and if I were performing here, I would feel it. Um, I like, I'm very believe in the spirituality of plugging into mm. a place, plugging into a, a, a history of a wall, these walls that have the seen energy and the, the energy of a room. Yeah. Mm. So when I was in the cock, you know, I was very thankful to that space. Uh, very thankful to people I know who, my friend Nisham who died during COVID was at the cock and I made sure I referenced and spoke of Nisham and yeah. joked and picked on in that space yeah. because to me that is a portal or a, a, an exchange within a spiritual realm to this realm that we are in. So I like to talk to things. I like to thank, I, when, my, when I'm done with a show and I go home at night, and I take this off, for instance, this net I've had for over probably 10 years. I uh, thank it, I kiss it, and I very delicately put it where it belongs. 
my jewelry. This was a gift from my uh, husband, David Hoyle, in London. Divine David gave me this. This is our wedding gift. I gave him, um, he gave me a ring, too, and then this one. And No, I gave him this. I'm so confused now. This, I gave him a pink one. He gave me a gold ring. The gold ring is at home because it slips off my finger. Mm. But he always wears this that I gave him. And that's like a jar tap. Top, yeah, right? mason yeah. jars. But yeah. I'm I'm very cool. aware of the magic and the power of, of things. Things, and I think that that is no different. It's actually much better than a big old rich gay man sitting in a big house in Rome with a funny hat on his head. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know this these things give me strength. They. They, you, I have to be thankful for them. I have to say thank you for the night tonight or fuck you for the night tonight. Yeah. And those exchanges are spirituality for me. Okay. And that's people, objects, places, weather, all of it. But there's not like a single creator that you no. speak to? No, I speak to all of it because it's in all everything. It. Okay. There is no, that's the old man in the fucking, that's the old Pope man. Fuck that shit. Well, the Pope isn't God. He's but he's like obviously a, got God inside of him and people speak to him and chase him around in a, a bulletproof car. of the Catholic Church. <laughs> Says them. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you need that old man yeah. to see your thing, sure. But I don't find God in his Pope mobile. No, you're somebody whose intelligence is far beyond, you're, you're able to see past those tropes or distractions i i think almost because for some people maybe they're representative of some kind of inroad into a relationship with god and for other people i think they're massive distractions and the way you spoke of the pope for instance just then for you it seemed like a massive distraction so i would think but just everything else you said you could just sidestep that whole aspect of religion and just go straight to the source but i guess you do it through things so maybe you already explained that and people and people yeah but yeah i, I mean i if i think the pope is just the same whatever the pope yeah the same that's the same shit that's, that's a thing that's shackling <laughs> your pony and putting it in a barn for some and for some others it's it's but a, that exists in every religion because i've I, as a jew <laughs> i feel the same thing about rabbis or whatever when somebody is like that guy's right. no closer to god than me like who gives a fuck or a guru or the pope mm -hmm. i just yeah. but it's just like we were talking about facebook it helps other people and exactly it doesn't help so, me. so well, yeah yeah exactly so yeah. fuck the pope but if it helps you Exa go for it see yeah. i knew yeah. <laughs> you can't help who it. am i to say your niceness just comes out of you. Yeah, but I'll let you know how I feel. I know. I'll let you know how I feel first, but and then I'll say. Just comes yeah. out. Then I say, <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Like fuck the gays. The, I, that's what I said in the Easter show. All the, all the, all the Vatican is. is a, it's, it's an example of what happens when gay men get rich and powerful. It's called the Vatican. It's yeah. called the gays the inside of it. Are over there. Look what they do to the nuns. But and I, look what I'm the nuns the do to way. the children. I'll tell you how I feel and I'll be okay with it. Like, Yeah. But yeah, I do believe in something. It's just everywhere. I guess it's like it, uh, something I think is important to talk about in regards to all the work you're doing. Because to me, it's so interconnected with the kind of creative, empathetic explorations you're doing to become to give people strength for their own inner um in, inner kookiness or inner p things that they reject inner pony uh colorful ponies however you want to put it to me that is such a spiritual work that you're doing so i instantly go like okay to do that work requires strength and i know where i get my strength to do work like that and it's directly from prayer Mm. And I couldn't get, I c that's why I'm always baffled when people don't have that and they still do that work. I'm like, where are you getting your strength to do that work? Mm. You see what I mean? And I identify as Christian or whatever, but I also don't know what the Pope is and all that stuff. And like to me, that's like neither here nor there. I, I don't even have like an affiliation with any kind of church or anything. Though I'll, when I go by a church in Brooklyn, I'll walk in and pray. And But it's like, that's a direct 
connection with me and God. I don't understand the whole dynamics of the church. I don't get offended when you guys talk about I don't, oh, fuck these yeah, people yeah. for <laughs> baptizing or the Pope's a gay guy in Rome or whatever. Like none of that. Def- There's uh, like, no gay guys in Rome. Right. <laughs> none of yeah, like great or none of it offends. You have your own religion. Yeah, well, none of it offends me, but yeah. I also identify uh, like I also listen to sermons and stuff like that and like so I get a lot of strength from that and yeah. I'm just like I give sermons at my show yeah I feel like that I get that energy from you so. I do and yeah. uh, I don't know like I strength to do those things I just think to be vulnerable well and to help others to do that that takes strength and yeah courage. yeah I think it's just a mystery in a way and also um, I like to think um, that um, I was with Michelle Lamy, Rick's partner, once, and she told me a poem as a spoken thing. I don't know who wrote it, but it's the thing we've always heard. It's about the footsteps. No, but <laughs> how dare you? Uh, how dare you? Uh, I thought but, that's what you were going to bring no, up. <laughs> but it, <laughs> it was like basically like the life, like the shit that we're on right now is yeah. a fucking boat, a little boat, you uh-huh. know, and it's on this fucking track and the little boat's going on and you're, you, you get on the boat yeah. and then you're fucking get off the boat but the boat's still going yeah like it just keeps going and you're right. on that boat and it's i'm really butchering the beauty of yeah. whoever wrote this shit it wasn't footsteps in the sand <laughs> and uh and it wasn't and it wasn't fucking shellacked on a piece of wood with a picture of the footsteps i've seen them all my parents uh, had that in everybody's house. parents had that <laughs> right right next to the kitten going hang in there on a branch everybody had it <laughs> So, okay. Um, but I like to think, uh, I try to think of that I have a responsibility. Mm-hmm. That I, everybody, sooner or later, hopefully figures out what they are here for. Or what is mm-hmm. calling them. Yeah. I believe in my, I listen to my gut and I look for road signs and I stick to my people. Yeah. My friends. And... I believe that I have a responsibility to obviously something is going on with what I'm doing and reaching people and having experiences and enjoying it. There's something there. Deep it's not, there's not without fault either. There are so many faults. Well, but thank God. That's yes, also part of the vulnerability. so many fucking faults. Hallelujah. That's the vulnerability of it as well. Well, we're all fucking human. And that's a yeah. th- that Don't get me started on the culture of cancel. Like, it's like, you know, if someone does something wrong, shit. like put them in, the, burn them at the stake, yeah, basically, and kill that. them. I hate that shit. So until we start to have empathy and compassion and yeah. understand it, these beings that we are fuck up yeah of course then we're all gonna be burned to the stake yeehaw yeah. i'll bring matches yeah. so but i i feel <laughs> like i feel like i have a responsibility just like out of when we were coming out of covid right what well, was still in it but you know the real lockdown yeah i had to create music because i felt a responsibility to people who are coming out of this darkness, yeah. I had a responsibility to offer them sound, visual, feeling, to let them process what the fuck they just went through. Mm. That's what art is for. Totally. So I didn't want to come out of this COVID and sing my songs I was fucking singing before that. Mm. I don't want to come out there and just start doing Big Shot and African Manis and oh, everything's just fine. It's not fine. Mm. So my responsibility is to create content and art that can help people who aren't doing that process what the fuck they just went so through. You got a purpose-driven motivation. Well, that's how you do that's, it. That's huge, though. That is a huge thing. Like, But that's that thing out there but, talking to me, shitting through me, shitting through that to thing you. Out there is, to me is God. Well, that's not cool. the Pope in Rome. Well, the, you can call it God. <laughs> like that thing it ain't the Pope in Rome. Whatever. You can call it God. Yeah, yeah. You know, God it's spelled per- backward is dog. dog. Dogecoin. It's purpose-driven motivation. It's yeah. A, it's awesome. 
It's awesome. But it hurts sometimes, and it gets very lonely, yeah. and it gets weird. Duh. Yeah. No shit. But you're so lucky that you have that. Well. So many people are completely aimless and lost and just have well, that's nothing what I'm here resembling. For. Come see me. Yeah. I'll put you to work. Yeah. Even you saying that motivates me to do more of that. Well, that's what I want to, to do give, is motivate. To give more. I like to motivate people. I like to make people feel some fire inside of themselves. Let's read another comment. So people are saying such nice things. I don't know things where you're finding you. these comments. Don't tell me. Let's see. Christine terrifies me, and yet you want more. I totally get what she's doing, and it's deeper than people realize. People, cool. people get you, I think. They do get me. That's why I love them. Yeah. How long did it take you, do you feel, to, to, to evolve from when you started 12 years ago? When did you feel like a shift that you found your purpose or things were going the way you wanted them to go? If that question makes mm. sense. I think I never wanted them to go a certain way. It was always step by step. And they were always beautiful steps. Like when I had the first song, uh, I met with my dear friend and still to this day, uh, PJ Raval, who makes all the videos, except for one, Butt Muscle, that was made by Matt Lambert. But PJ's made all the videos since day one. And that's how we started. I had this song. He said, what do you want to work on? And I had big ideas. He said, let's start small. What do you have? And I said, that's I have a, a song called... a good creative partner right there. Let's start small. Yeah, he's like, let's just take a step. That's a Because great... I'm like, ang, 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 you know? Limitations. Yeah. That's and like... he said, what do you got? And I said, I have a song called Fix My Dick. He said, let's make a video for that. And then we'll see if and we that's... want to work with each other. Christine came from that? out of Well, the... no, was Christine, Christine was already or... cooking. I was already boiling, oh, okay. but I wasn't touring uh, nothing we were doing shows in backyards at a thing called gay by gay gay that was the <laughs> our solution to south by southwest <laughs> gay gay by gay gay gay. Gay. yeah my, i would love to play that one you that you playing south by southwest you got not, to be a gay because it's no well, we know uh <laughs> <laughs> what what how do you well, define gay you gotta this be 100 percent gay or can you like be gay on the weekend you can't be drunk gay <laughs> Uh, uh, this is my friend, my friend, my two friends, Silky. This is true. Is it Silky. G X G G? G A Y B I G A Y G A Y. Oh, yeah. And my friends, Silky and Hazy, started this in a backyard because yeah. all South by was rotten with gay bands. They'd like, oh, you're a gay band? Well, we'll put you in a gay bar with other gay players. Oh, my God. They were horrible. They just fucking That must have been assholes. a bunch of years ago. Now they couldn't get no, away bitch, with that. No, bitch, they were doing it. Well, they were doing it when I was there That's in crazy. 2000 hoo-ha. Uh, they, put, <laughs> they put me in a bear bar with That's, no stage and have a whole gay lineup. No. Oh, my God. No back, <laughs> no back line, no PA, no, no sound man. But no association. <laughs> the whole point of a The whole point of a This festival. is what you'll get and you'll like it. Yeah. The, the whole point of a fucking festival is to interact with other artists, <laughs> yeah. not of your ilk. Right. Yeah. And they were like, oh, these people are gay. Put them in the gay room. <laughs> and it was like, fuck you. Oh, so, so Silky, Maybe that was the year we were there, Joe. It was every year. 2008. So Silky and Hazy <laughs> said, fuck this shit. And they start. it was the last Sunday of South Bar. Mm -hmm. And it was all day, all night. This lasted for 10 fucking years. Every band that identified as uh -huh. all met in a field or a backyard and all played for free all day, all night. And it was the it most does. beautiful time you've ever had. People from all over the world came, for came and they performed for free. Big Frida was in the backyard. I mean, everybody was out there doing their shit. And it was the best thing. And then after 10 years, as things do, it just was time to put it to sleep. Mm. And it, um, That's a good run, though. What a, what a fucking run. But um, I don't know why I was talking about that. Hey, tell me about that show you did at the beginning of COVID where you performed inside that cube. Oh yeah, we made the vine, a vinyl that's, vinyl that's box. A, that was like pretty early on, right? In mm -hmm. COVID, and you were kind of like, I felt like that was kind of a reaction. Oh yes. Yeah. I was trying talk about that. A little this bit. was like I uh, needed a Pink Floyd song. I did. I did Mother. Yeah, that's amazing. I like them a lot. They yeah, are, they're amazing. They're, they have orchestral, theatrical, symphonic, oh, yeah, they're, they're explosive killer. feelings that take me places. Huge. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I paired up with uh, Leah at Participant Gallery 
And where's that? That's on Houston Street. Okay. Uh, between A and B. When you first moved back to Brooklyn, were you, were you like, "This is Houston Street, not Houston"? No, I know how to do all that. I know, I I'm from, I'm from Louisiana. Yeah, you went from Texas. Yeah, and Chapatulas, like, New That's Orleans. Houston. Oh yeah, but I, you know, yeah. hello. But uh, <laughs> spell that. I, I used to live right that. above Checkpoint Charlie's. Oh uh, De- Lord, I did uh, Decatur and Esplanade. That's rough. Yeah, right four in the morning, it would be like on Tuesday. It'd be like, dun, 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 well, they don't dun, close. They there don't is, ever there's close. no four in the morning. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's crazy. It just, yeah, it you just do. On a Tuesday night at four oh. in the morning, three people in the bar and the blues band starts up. At it's least like, it wasn't 12 in the afternoon on Bourbon Street singing Bobby McGee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of those. Oh. But, so, okay, um, so you're at the gallery. What's it called? The. Uh, the oh, participant. participant. I just I approached Leah and I said, "Hey, I have this idea, and I respect uh, so she's family, and and I and I, I love New York City so fucking much because it's like a switchboard, and and uh-huh. if you have uh, a nugget in your pocket, you plug in, and the city gives you back exactly what you give it. Uh, it's a beautiful exchange. I love, 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 love this place." Yeah, me and too. Uh, it's, that's cool that you're saying that because so many people are talking down on it right now. It's fucking amazing. It's still well, then amazing, they can leave. Go, it? go, go, go. If you don't like yeah. it, get the yeah. fuck out of here. Yeah. Go anywhere else. I don't care. Yeah. Get the fuck out. <laughs> or stick around and come to my show, and I'll change your fucking mind. I'm coming to your next. But show. you better. But um, you know, I I said Leah, I like to. I have this idea and it's, I can't do it alone. That's the best way to ever approach someone because it's true. It's right. like, I can't do this by myself. Can you help me or think of a way that I could do this? That is a great and idea. She said, yes, of course, because she's the fucking badass. And we created a 10 foot high stage with four poles, like a boxing ring. Yeah. And then we wrapped it in vinyl. It was like four foot, three foot high, four yeah, foot high, and then it. the rest. Yeah, and it. then my friend Michael Sharkey. Uh, and his friend Andromache have a warehouse in Red Hook by Gibby's. Mm-hmm. And Michael and Andromache are very kind and generous. And they let us go in there and build this fucking creature with this friend Leah New. And then we um, brought in two friends of mine, Guy uh, Smith and, and his partner, uh, Robert. And they did tech. And my friend Glenn who works with Leah did great that. Too. It's a great team of people. And then you start to create, which yeah. is I like. And I said, I want everybody in hazmat suits. Yeah, the hazmat and suits. I want the technicians in hazmat. And I want it because I also have another fetish of being Daryl Hannah and Splash when they capture her and put her in the big tank. Nice. So I said, this is just like Daryl Hannah, which is the story of the wild woman, the Tom wild Hanks. man, something coming from nature into this crap world we live in, which is how I feel uh, in my life with all of you fucks out that's there. That's interesting. So, so I got put inside the big plastic box and all of the technicians were around and then I went to town and I screamed about the atrocities of our world right now yeah. right at that time. And that was how I got the only way I could survive. It's pretty cutting edge. I'm very pleased with it. And uh, yeah. so is Leah. I was telling her that the consistency and the quality of what she puts out as far as music videos and the that stream, the stream yeah. from Bowery and the stream she did from the cock just visually beautiful so as a videographer thank you the, it's just top of the line as far as that's hard to get him to yeah, say that as kind far of shit, no because yeah. a lot of people don't do well, it i'm glad well. you appreciate it yeah. i love no, people who can recognize some fucking shit it's art it's yeah. art on the highest level and the and the preciseness and the look and the feel is just amazing how you keep managing to put that through regardless of the situation you're in or the times we're in uh and it's admirable that's well it, it comes with help from a team of people who give a fuck and yeah, know what exactly, they're doing yeah. Yeah. like that's the that's the ticket too like i can like i can only do so much and it's a lot and i like it yeah but the team the family fuck team. me every time though and i and i select selected many of them and or approached me of them because they carry good reputations and people speak highly of them and that's the people i want to work with uh and everyone involved even down to my friend scott awalt who got us into the cock you know and like so many wonderful people how do you and, go about finding a team uh well i usually stick with the one i got yeah, stick right. with the people and i've been working like. with most of the people i know for 
12 years. Mm -hmm. I still work with PJ, my dancers. I still work with Thomas T. Gravel. He has been dancing with me since the Fix My Dick video. I take him all over Europe with me. We, mm -hmm. He teaches me, I teach him. We hate each other. We love each other. It's a fucking relationship. Yeah. Kind of like you and me, Joe. Like me and uh, yeah, y'all, he was saying the same thing the with same. you two. Look we at, fight, we fight a lot. We fight on, on these podcasts. We're well, because you can. We're not fighting I, now. I was giving but. the video example that for the last, <laughs> God, 16 years or uh, whatever. Today, you mean? No, just in general where you're like, I hey, said, I have this song. Do you want to make a video? And we just get uh, together and pull shit out of our yeah. ass and it comes out gold and we yeah. love it and it's an easy process and yeah. yeah and it's comfortable it's really like you uh, hold on to the fucking mm -hmm. don't fix what ain't broke mm. so are you excited about the future and what's coming up and now that things are opening up and what do you got going on coming into the future yes what do you got um, what are you doing well i've got new music that i'm shitting out I'd, I'd shout out two songs at the easter show that had never been out i started playing piano uh -huh. so i'm playing piano and singing now. isn't that great i've been someone playing else piano. is holding your mic <laughs> that's my friend that's that's that brilliant uh, his name is uh bed There's a dude standing holding the mic while she's playing the yeah his i call him bed tundy <laughs> and he's my backup boy bed tundy bed tundy he wears all leather and he's that's yeah, my friend he's frank standing there holding the mic but he we didn't have a mic stand <laughs> so he held it for me uh, but I'm I got new music that I'm making with uh, my family producer Peter Peter Stopshinsky. He's in Austin, and we we get together at night and uh, turn on the computer machines, mm -hmm. and we can get baked and make music, and it's really nice. Yeah. Um, that Are you, I is that in Austin or here? No, he's in Austin, and I'm here. Oh, so you're doing and I work. didn't think this would work, and I was very scared about our relationship. Yeah. But we turned that Zoom Doom shit on. Yeah, and it's fine. And and we we. He shows me the screen he's working on, and I can see the levels and all the haha, -ha, and we work. Yeah, and it's a testament to how hard we want to try and make it work. So yeah. I'm working with Peter. I'm working with my friend Roddy Bottom, who's um, a fantastic fucking musician. He's been in bands. He was in Faith No More and Imperial Teen and Crickets, and he now he's in Man on Man. He's a fucking juggernaut, and we're making some some sounds together. And then um, I'm going to have a little spot in a bar that um, you know the Parkside Lounge on Houston. Yeah. So I'm um, think I'm going to be shitting out some stuff there in the summer. Okay. A bit of a kind of a a lounge. -ish. I like to call it Christine unbutt plugged okay and i'm gonna <laughs> be uh work workshopping a lot of mm, my new material with musicians as you saw in the bowery electric show uh, i'm working with musicians more and more strange things i'm i'm, in, I'm addicted to the saxophone right now yeah, i heard that saxophone and, and harp i can't stop saxophone is it, it, it is what my brain feels and sounds like vangelis right i'll take vangelis any day yeah. i love <laughs> vangelis and the man the guy who's the i just looked i forgot his name gregory something who is the saxophonist for george michael's careless whispers oh yeah uh that kind of shit i love george and then Michael. like any kind of saxophone that's like laura palmer's dirty bar back in the woods in twin peaks kind of saxophone mm -hmm. where it's just screaming Hugh give Lewis it to me in the news. Uh, I'd fuck him. <laughs> I heard he got a big all day. I heard that too. Uh, I will follow that trail. <laughs> I, I did not hear that. I, I heard that. Well, that's, that's, that's known. I yeah, that mm, <laughs> dirty they to, old. They used to call him Horsey Lewis. Now. Dirty old <laughs> raspy man. Him and Tom Jones. I'm I'll have a sleepover. Tom Jones, I can imagine. Tom Jones. Yeah. Really? He, ca oh. he carries himself like he's got a big. Dick. The three I'd fuck. Tom Jones. Yeah. This is the Welsh trifecta okay. from Wales. Yeah. Tom Jones, yeah. Richard Burton, Shirley Bassey. I would fuck all three of them in a three-way like nobody's business. They got the biggest fucking cocks and holes in the world. Richard Branson? Richard Burton. Oh, Burton. <laughs> Richard Branson. <laughs> I was like, huh? If you that think I would sense. fuck Richard Branson. It didn't make sense. I would have flipped, flipped the table and walked <laughs> off the show. I'm glad you didn't. No, I, I, if I were you, I would have. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, no, but Richard Burton. Richard Burton. That anyone. Makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, hello, hello. <laughs> Richard Burton, Tom Jones, and Shirley Bassey. I'm like, that's all I need to know. I'm moving to Wales. Right. But um, yeah, I uh, the saxophone is the jam, and I'm I'm loving the instruments and the musicians I'm working with, and so I want to continue to 
use the beauty of this city to explore the darkness of my heart. I'm glad you're back here. Me too. I'm very happy yeah, to be here. Yeah, that's awesome. I want to be here all summer. I have, we have, many of us have sat through this COVID and I uh, have no desire to get on the road. I have no yeah, desire to I tour. I don't really either. I want to stay here and I, I want to. play a lot though. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. I want to fucking wanna dig in and play shows. and then go on the road with this new shit yeah. and fucking slap them on the face with a dead fish. Yeah. So how do people find you um, other than the Facebook that... Well, I don't do... I really don't do Facebook so anymore. How, how do so, you expand uh, your Instagram. audience? Instagram. That's what I'm figuring out. Instagram is my best. Yeah. And what's that? What's your tag on Instagram? Oh, Christine, Christine official. Underscore, official. underscore official. official. And it's Christine with two E's. Three. Three, Three E's. E-E-N-E. Oh, yeah. e -E -N -E. oh this is a good thing. Yeah. Here you go, Catholic. If you go... <laughs> no, this is true. This is true. Like, my, my website my, my website is christine.org, okay? Yeah. <laughs> if you... Get this shit. I love this so much. This is, this is a gift from my God. Mm -hmm. If you type in christine.org and you forget the last E, it takes you to Teens for Christ. Oh, really? Nice. <laughs> so those teens for Christ kids are probably accidentally putting that E in and going to my site. I'll go to your site and go like, oh, she's doing social work. Look at this. Nah, no, right? it's very, it keeps the mystery alive. That is, that's pretty good. The mystery of the faith. <laughs> um, but yeah, Instagram, it seems to be the best. Yeah, okay. And until yeah, I... like over 40,000 followers. I'm yeah, yeah, and that just happened great. over 12 years or whenever that shit started. So I'm very pleased with... The accessibility I have with my mm, people who give a fuck what I do. And I like to be able to send letters or write to other people who I admire. Yeah. And there's no barrier around them. So who, I like... Who have you written to that you admire? Oh, many. I, I, I wrote to... Uh, Jones. I wish. <laughs> Richard I wrote, Burton. There's just people I read. Like, I'm a, I like that um, the artist, her name is Cindy Sherman. Oh, yeah. And because she's a shapeshifter and she's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I wrote to her once out of the fucking blue. I just wrote to her and Did said, she write back? Yes. Wow. And I, I said, Hello, Miss Sherman. I'm Christine. And I hope maybe one day I could take you to lunch or uh, we could go to a park and you could we could discuss our mutual appreciation of shape-shifting that's a great and one. she said hello and we still talk to this day that's incredible and i like that i find that the most of the artists i respect or want to be with are the ones that are vulnerable enough to allow that to happen right so there's a lot of those artists in new york yeah tons and tons and tons yeah it's the so place for them. uh i i find that 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 particular platform allows for that if if the planets line up properly if they yeah. don't who gives a fuck you just keep doing it you probably see them within the fucking street later on down the road and you say hello then yeah um that's amazing and she's a huge artist she's badass she's totally and, badass. and she's nice and um and then you know um I don't know. The landscape is changing, so none of us know how to continue. Because All right, so your BFF with uh, Cindy Sherman no, no. and Rick Omens is giving you oh, free clothes. <laughs> I mean, well, Rick's, Rick is a supporter, though, but like he brought us. He was the first person who brought us overseas. Oh, really? Like He, he and Michelle brought us to a party. He booked us, and then I fell in love with him, and... Uh, he really has a family of people. He knows Kimber Fowler. He knows Divine David. He knows uh, t tons of people that they're like, we're his kids kind of, or, or, or he's our kid. Or yeah. it, it's a family and he makes us feel beautiful and we make him feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's an exchange. And it's not about the clothes or things. It's about the gifts or the appreciation or the nasty little things we do for each other mm -hmm. and all. And, and, it's a way of showing affection and saying, I care about you, or, yeah. or try to squeeze your fucking dick into these things that don't fit and have fun doing it. I, I like to tear, I tear that up. describes his clothes perfectly. I tear his clothes up. I <laughs> me said, too, it's awesome. I said, why are you sending me these nice things? I'm gonna ruin them. And he goes, exactly. Yeah. And he, he wants to see his work flourish and go to weird towns and <laughs> villages. Like I want to see my work go to weird places once you get a hold of it. Yeah. yeah. So it's, a, it's an exchange and I like creative people or any people in general who are willing to do that. I got one of his kilts and rocked it for a while. 
A kilt. A kilt, yeah, one of his black kilts. Whoa. I liked it. It made me feel Did good. you skateboard in the kilt? Probably. <laughs> I had a shaved head then, too. Oh, God. It was a weird look. You've been through some time. Oh, I've been through things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course. That's good. You don't have one of those uh, skateboards that are electric, do you? Yeah, right there. The kind with the remote control? Uh-huh. Oh, Jesus. We got to talk after this show. Okay, we, I would like that. I would like that very much. <laughs> All right, well, uh, you got any final? No, I, I, I thought I, I loved the conversation. Me too. I, I'm yeah, really, I, I, I don't know how y'all found me and all this shit, but I really enjoyed yeah, coming so to talk to y'all. Listen, I and saw I, you. I was exposed you saw for the, the first time, and, and I just felt something about you. I I'm glad know. you had the courage to do so. Yeah. I was very happy, and I I do live with a cat, so I'm, I could talk for days. Pickles. Tickles, pickles. Tickles, pickles. pickles. But thanks for having and We'll, and, we'll and have to have catch up again in like a year or six months. Yeah, I'll be pregnant with heat. We'll get you. Well, a, we'll get an we'll update. We'll see what, how it's all been going. Yeah. That Same to y'all. I'd like to awesome. know how y'all are and doing, see too. see you at the bar in Houston in the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to come through. Parkside. Yeah. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks, thanks everybody. Go, go follow Christine on Instagram. Insta, Insta Ham. Insta official. Christine, Christine underscore, underscore official. official. And also go support uh, Christian teens. And yeah, if you, if, you end up, <laughs> if you end up there, send them to me. And support us on Patreon. Oh, yeah, support us oh, on yeah. Patreon. Patreon. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Peace and love. See you guys and soon. Thank you for watching and listening. Bye. 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 That was fun. Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out Come to Where I'm From. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated.